Hey there, movie fans. I'm Scott Movie Mance, and in terms of movie anniversaries, this one is a biggie. Happy 40th anniversary to The Empire Strikes Back. It came out May 21st, 1980, and in terms of sequels to blockbusters, no one in Hollywood had ever seen the likes of The Empire Strikes Back because no one had ever seen the likes of Star Wars. In terms of sequels to blockbusters, you had Planet of the Apes, which had four sequels, but wasn't the same. Those sequels were very low budget. But then you also had the James Bond movies. There were a lot of James Bond movies by this point, but they were individual installments with very little continuity from one movie to the next, and they were standalone films. Star Wars was obviously different, but also the original Star Wars was a complete film. The good guys won. Luke and Han and Chewie got their medals, and that was it. Was there even another story to be told? And it turns out there was big time. Now, there was a lot riding on The Empire Strikes Back. It had to be as good, if not better, than the original Star Wars. If it was a failure, that would have been the end of Star Wars right then and there. But it turns out that The Empire Strikes Back, to this day, it is still the greatest Star Wars movie of them all. Plus, it is one of the greatest movies of all time, period. And there are a lot of reasons for that. So let's count them down, starting with number one, Imagination. Where the original Star Wars ended with a big battle in space, The Empire Strikes Back started with a big battle on a planet, on an ice planet. And the rebels flew these little snow speeders, and the Empire manned these huge walkers that kicked the crap out of the rebellion. Then you had the chase through the asteroid field, Luke learning the ways of the Force on Dagobah, Bespin, Cloud City, the big lightsaber battle, the Empire Strikes Back looked like it truly took place in a galaxy far, far away. Second is romance. From the moment that Han Solo and Princess Leia met, you knew that they were meant to be. Even though they hated each other, or at least it seemed like it, they were bickering and arguing. Opposites really do attract. But Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher had that great chemistry. You knew that they were destined to be together. And when they finally did hook up in the Millennium Falcon, that romance gave The Empire Strikes Back a deeper level of maturity. This was a Star Wars film for grown-ups. They were meant to be together, and when Han Solo was frozen and taken off to Jabba the Hutt, you felt his loss. And what great parting words. I love you. I know. Third, you had iconic characters. Of course, you had Lando Calrissian, and you had Boba Fett, who became so popular despite only having three lines of dialogue. But Yoda really takes the cake. Here was a spiritual advisor who gave such great words of wisdom. He made the force a religion. And you got to give it to Mark Hamill because his performance, his commitment to his performance is what really gave Yoda life. And what great dialogue. Do or do not. There is no try. Size matters not. And that is why you failed. Number four, that surprise twist. I will never forget when I saw The Empire Strikes Back in 1980 on opening weekend. And I just have such vivid memories of where I sat and who I was with and what happened at that big moment of truth that nobody saw coming. When Vader tells Luke, I am your father, my jaw hit the floor, everyone else's jaw hit the floor. It still, to this day, is one of the biggest and best surprise twists of any movie in history. I spent the next three years of my life trying to convince my friends that Vader was lying because he was trying to get Luke to join the dark side. Of course, he wasn't lying. We found out in Return of the Jedi, and then we also found out that Leia was his sister, but, but I digress. But that defining moment between Luke and Vader came at the culmination of a very, very intense lightsaber battle. 
And at that one moment, this galaxy-wide battle between good and evil got very, very personal. I still think that the lightsaber battle in The Empire Strikes Back is the very best lightsaber battle of them all. And every time I get to that point, I still am completely blown away by that moment, by that shocker. It still packs a powerful punch. Number five is John Williams. Now, who would have thought that John Williams would have been able to top his Oscar-winning score from the original Star Wars? But did he ever, and he did it with one great musical sequence to the next, the battle for Hoth, the chase through the asteroid field, and of course, the Imperial March. The Imperial March is so significant to Star Wars, it's just as important as the main Star Wars theme itself. And it's hard to imagine a Star Wars film without the Imperial March. And if you don't believe me, go back and rewatch the original film. You can hear that something is missing because the Imperial March is not there. Number six, the good guys lost. Of course, we want the good guys to win, but there's something to be said about the good guys losing. And boy, did they lose here. The Rebels were on the run after getting the crap kicked out of them on Hoth. You know, Vader beat Luke really bad, chopped off his arm, told him he was his father. Han's taken off the job of the hut, froze him. We don't know if we're ever going to see him again. The Empire Strikes Back left you wanting more. So much that you're watching Return of the Jedi or the other films that followed, it just didn't live up to the standards of The Empire Strikes Back. The only thing that can fit the bill of matching The Empire Strikes Back is watching The Empire Strikes Back again and again and again. That is why the film has endured for 40 years, and that is why it will continue to endure for 40 more years and beyond in this galaxy and in galaxies far, far away. So happy anniversary, The Empire Strikes Back, and may the Force be with you.